Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going to go over a lab I do with my grade 12 physics class on the conservation of momentum in one dimension. What we have here is an air track. We have two different carts. We have these two gold carts, which each weigh 150 grams. And we have this red one, which is twice that weight, which is 300 grams. We are going to be doing three different collisions. We're going to analyze the speed with these speed or photogate timers, which will tell us the speed of the carts as they pass through them. All right, so let's start with the first collision that we're going to analyze. And it's going to be your job to determine if momentum is being conserved. Does the momentum, the total momentum before collision, approximately equal the total momentum after the collision? All right, so let's start with our first collision. The first collision, we're using these two masses, which are the same, both 150 grams. This one's going to go through the first photo gate timer so that we can record uh, the speed that it's initially traveling at. Then it's going to hit this mass, causing it to go through this photogate timer. Initially, its velocity will be at rest, and then we'll be able to detect what its velocity is after the collision. This one, it may bounce back. It may not. If it does, we'll have it go through this photogate timer to see what its velocity is after the collision. Now remember, velocity is a vector. These will only detect speeds, not velocity. So when you're doing your calculations, choose one direction to be your positive direction. All right, let's get started. All right, so what happened? We had this one initially as it went through this photogate timer, it was moving at 0 0.85 meters per second. Then it collided with this one, essentially came to a rest. So its final velocity was essentially zero. And then this one moved through this photogate timer at 0 0.72 meters per second. So you can check conservation of momentum there. Since they are the same masses and this one came to rest, Based on conservation momentum, we might assume that this velocity should be the same as this. It was a little bit less. This is not a perfect system. Uh, we will have some outside factors acting on it, but that's pretty close. Let's try our next collision. For our next collision, I'm going to move them towards each other. These two detectors will detect their initial velocity. And then when they bounce off of each other, this detector and this detector will detect their final velocities. It's your job to test for conservation of momentum. All right, so what did we get there? First, when they came in, they passed through these detectors. Our second mass was going at 0 0.54 meters per second, and our first mass was going at 0 0.72 meters per second. They collided and moved away from each other. Our first mass was moving at 0 0.65 meters per second, and our second mass was moving at 0 0.49 meters per second. So record that information and let me know if momentum was conserved. All right, so the next collision, what we're going to do is I have Velcro here, to try and get them to stick together in a completely inelastic collision. So I'll have this one will move, this one will initially be at rest, and this will detect this one's initial velocity. They'll stick and move through this one to detect their final velocity together. Let's see if momentum's conserved.
All right, so let's go over the results. As this one passed through the first detector, it was going at 0 0.77 meters per second. And then as they both went through the second detector, they were moving at 0 0.32 meters per second. So try conservation of momentum. Was momentum conserved? All right, our next collision, we're going to have our larger mass, 300 grams, at rest. Our smaller mass, 150 grams, is going to move towards it and hit it. This will detect its initial velocity, and then it will bounce back, I'm assuming it would due to momentum conservation, and this detector will detect its final velocity. All right, so let's look at the results. We had this mass initially travel through this detector going at 0 0.68 meters per second, collided with our larger mass, and the larger mass was going at 0 0.38 meters per second. This one bounced back and went through this detector at 0 0.33 meters detect. <laughs> 0 0.33 meters per second. So, write down those results, check it, was momentum conserved. All right, so the next one, I'm gonna push them both towards each other. These first detectors will calculate their initial speed, and then the outer detectors will detect their final speeds. All right, so let's check these results. This one moved through with an initial velocity of 0.52 meters per second. And this one was moving with an initial velocity of 0.28 meters per second. And as they collided and bounced back, this one was moving with a velocity of 0.39 meters per second. And this one was moving with a velocity of 0.09 meters per second. So check momentum conservation, see if it works out. Now let's move on to our very last collision. With this collision, we're gonna use the Velcro strips again. We're gonna have this one moving towards it, whereas this one will be at rest. We'll detect its initial velocity here. They'll stick, and then we'll detect their velocities together. All right, so let's look at what happened. This one was moving with a speed of 0.77 meters per second. They collided and together they were moving at a speed of 0.22 meters per second. So those are all the collisions we're going to analyze. See if momentum was conserved in your calculations. And if you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next lab on two-dimensional collisions.